everybody. I hope you enjoyed my other videos for hyperspace. Now, this is my final video in a series, which is basically just going to be a very early opinion of the game. And the reason why I say this is an early opinion, well, this game is in a, I call it pre-alpha, call it a pre-release, whatever version of the game, and it's actually changed a little bit. And I don't want to give a 100% review of the game because not only has things changed, and I like those changes, and that's not the reason why I don't want to give a final opinion of the game. The reason why I don't want to give a final opinion of the game quite yet is because this game is basically looking at the first 10 pages of a book and deciding a final review on a 1,000-page novel because there's so much more to the game that I cannot see just by doing this quick overview of the game. You are looking at a empire-building game which has 25 races. Every single one of these races is asymmetric. You have a game that has numerous different tech abilities, and while they can be a little bit random, they are adding a lot to the game. You're going to have different techs, and I don't know if any of these techs are going to go through any changes or there's going to be a lot more techs added, and I think there are going to be more techs, but don't quote me on that. You also have a game that has lots of secrets, and again, I don't know if these secrets are going to change or not, but they potentially could, but that's going to add a lot to the game and show that there's lots of different things that can change in the game. So in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is this is a very early, called a pre-review of a pre-alpha or pre-release kind of game. Now, Hyperspace is a space empire building game. Now, if you watch my first video in the series, my quick overview, I basically said my opinion of space empire building games. Space empire building games are kind of like a, it's almost like a holy grail when it comes to board games. Every board gamer loves the idea of playing a space empire game. I mean, you have the concept of taking this little empire and building it and exploring the galaxy and going across, attacking your opponents, making your empire bigger, broadening your horizons, and improving your empire in various different ways. The problem with these games is they take so darn long to play. You can take games such as Space Empires 4X, which is the best 4X game out there. Heck, it's in the name of the game, Space Empires 4X. But it really is the best Space Empire playing game you will ever play. But it's also going to be a game that you're going to be leaving set up for multiple days. If you play it solo, that's not a problem. But if you play with three of your best friends or you play the eight-player scenario, which exists in the game, you might as well just write out an entire weekend just to play the game. Or you can look at this more dramatic cousin, and I say dramatic cousin because it's more of a space opera game, but that's Twilight Imperium, which is also another space empire building game, but it's a little bit less militaristic and a little bit more of a space opera or a drama or something like that. It's basically more like Star Wars, just to use a very overbroad description of it. But either way, both games are very long playing. You can play Twilight Imperium 3 or 4. Well, most people are playing 4 these days. But that game, as a six-player game, you're looking at seven or eight hours. Now, I know some people are going to hop up and say, no, well, I can play in four hours. Well, good for you. Most people are playing that game in six to eight hours as a six-player game. So the biggest goal that we have as board game players and designers have as designers is trying to take that glorious experience of the grand space game and make it playable in, you know, one evening. So hyperspace has done that by taking out certain aspects of the Space Empire game, changing some things, and making it a much faster playing game. Now, this isn't the first game that's tried to do this. We have Taxes, the Space Empire game, or, sorry, Eclipse, which is, you know, global taxing on the economic scale. You have games such as Exodus Event, or Exodus Proxima Centauri, and its various expansions which are a lot closer to the traditional 4X, but when you start adding in everything that comes in with X's, you're taking a game that can take like three hours, you add in a few expansion materials that goes up to four, five, or six hours, and you're approaching those long playing games again. And you can look at various other Space Empire building games, but basically what I'm saying is Space Empire games, to get to the true 4X style game, you're looking for a long game. So what you need to do is you need to start backing things out to reduce the gameplay, and that's what Peterson Games has done with this game. The question you need to ask yourself when you play these games is the things that are taken out are those things that are going to ruin the 4X experience for you. For example, for me, I'm not a huge fan of Eclipse, because Eclipse, while it's a 4X game, it has taken out a little bit of the combat and some of the other things that I enjoy, including exploration, and while it has a little bit of exploration, it is diminished to create a faster playing 4X game. What Hyperspace has done 
is instead of having the bookkeeping take up a lot of your time, it's removed the bookkeeping and made the bookkeeping kind of an action that you're going to take on your turn. And they've streamlined the way the game plays, and that's what we're getting with hyperspace is we're getting a streamlined 4x style game and it's something i actually really liked about this game one of the biggest things i have problems with when i play a lot of these 4x style games or games that claim to be 4x light or 3.5 as i like to call them is that things have been sacrificed that i enjoy that make me enjoy the game a lot less hyperspace hasn't sacrificed in ways that i do not enjoy i have the exploration which i really really enjoy quite a bit you have a map where you're exploring and every time you're playing the game, there's always more token or more land areas available than you're going to need. Even this pre-alpha, you see all these different locations that come with the game, and the borders can be set up differently every time you play the game. Well, that's not unique to hyperspace, and I'm not claiming it is. At least we get the exploration part of the 4X experience. You also have the exploitation by gaining the resources, going out there and scavenging, finding the secrets that's going to be available in some of these tiles, so you get the exploitation by gaining the resources and everything like that along those lines. You get the extermination because you're getting combat, and combat is very powerful in this game. While it's not crippling, I mean, you saw the combats going back and forth, it is still something you want to be doing in this game because it's going to be giving you victory points. It's going to be giving you these secret cards, which can shake up the game and also give you more victory points. And the game incentivizes you to be a little bit more aggressive because the attacker is the one who gets the bonuses. The defender, while they may be able to play more of a turtling style of game saying, you know, come after me, I can take what you got. The trick is if you play that style of game, you need to be building the other parts of your empire because if you're not, you're not going to get the victory points from attacking and that's going to hamper your empire. So you have the extermination. So you have the exploration, you have the exploitation, you have the exter extermination, and you also have the expansion of this game because you see how your empire is slowly expanding across the board, and then you're losing a little bit of your foothold as you're losing your colonies, you're losing your star bases, you're taking them back, and you see that this game, especially in the later parts of the game, which you didn't get to see in the playthrough video, that the star bases become a highly contested item because each single sector of space can only have one star base. So if I want to go here, I need to destroy that before I can build my star base. He says star base doesn't want to go away, does it? So you see that this game creates a unique ability to actually have all four of the X's in a game that doesn't play that long. Because the side of the box or the rules say that the game is about 25 minutes per player. And they're actually not too far off on this. I admit the first couple of times I played this game that the games ran long. I think our first four-player game ran three hours, which in and of itself is absolutely amazing because I was teaching it and playing it with four people. One person who's kind of known to be one of those people who has a little bit of the analysis paralysis. All that being said, we still got the game played in about three, three and a half hours, and that's with me teaching the game. So I can easily see this game conceivably being playable in about 25 minutes per player without much of a problem. And yes, that means a two-player game, Space Empire, 4X style game, two players is going to play about an hour. I don't think that's too much, too far off to say or make that claim. Our know, four-player game is probably going to be about two, two and a half hours. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I can conceivably, no, I can't play it this way because, you know, this is the pre-alpha, but I can see even a six-player game taking about three hours approximately to play. So they managed to take that great 4X experience and condense it down while each of the 4Xs is still represented in what I think is a great way, but keep the play time down and you have this great game. So what else comes with this game? You have the ability to have lots of replay because every one of your empires is going to play differently every time you play the game. Not just because I'm playing a different empire every time I play the game, but each individual empire is going to play out differently depending on what kind of text you manage to get out. Now, for example, the Skith Empire in this game, I was actually lucky enough to get the mass production, which I think is pretty darn powerful for the Skith. I'd almost say it might be a little bit too powerful for them, especially if you can get a resource engine because it allows you to build up multiple units. And the nice thing about the Skith is they can hide their units on the board, which makes them super nasty. So if you're double building, you're being doubly super nasty. But my point is the way these technologies come out can influence the way you're going to play the game. When I get this technology, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive, and I'm going to look at people and say, come at me. No, no, come on, come on. I only got all these units on my board. I dare you to attack me. Go for it. I dare you. 
So you see something very cool about the way these texts come out. You also see the way these secrets come out. You saw, especially in that gameplay video, how much these secret cards changed the layout of the board, changed how every one of the players, or the two players in this game, how did change, or had to change up their decisions, how they were playing. I mean, it looked like the white player was starting to just obliterate across the board, and the only thing that was stopping them was the fact that we were out of colonies. Until I managed to get that one card that managed to knock white back a few paces, but that may not have actually hurt white, actually, if you looked at it in the long run, because the white player has the ability to build colonies for free. So that actually in the long run helped them because they could have built like that very, very easily. So did I hurt them? Did I help them? Was that card really overpowerful or was it more of like a secret weapon the white player kind of used to help them because it kind of did what they had to do anyways? They were at the point where they had to start destroying their colonies to start moving further across the board. So you see that there's this interesting back and forth. And like I said, while this game only comes with the four basic races right now, I've seen how asymmetric every one of these races play. They play differently. They all have their own special bonuses. They have their own ways that they like to play. Some of these races feel like they come out really strong out of the gate like a thoroughbred. Some of these feel like they're really good workhorses where they're going to take the long game. So it's really interesting how that plays. I like that a lot. And Sandy Peterson, the designer of this game, has proven time and time again that he can take an asymmetric game and make every single race feel super powerful, but for some reason they all seem to balance themselves out. You look at Cthulhu Wars, except for one faction, which is kind of iffy in, in many people's opinions, that game is really, really good. You look at the God's War, while I've only been able to play the print and play, even playing the print and play and seeing how the other races play over on, not on Tabletopia, but on, uh, don't call me, there's a, another way you can download all these other races and see their powers, but you can see how asymmetric those races are. You can go back in his design career when he built PC games, you can see that he was able to design asymmetric games, and he does a really good job of doing that. So I have no doubt in my mind that he's probably going to include 25 races in this game that are all going to be unique, all feel very powerful in their own aspects, and all play really, really well. So I have really little doubt that that's going to be really, really awesome. The game has lots of replay value through the various techs, through the various races, through the various ways everything's going to come out, and the various ways that the different empires are going to build every time you play the game. You saw how this played because we had certain things that came out, like that spaceship I was able to find. But if you had different sectors of space that didn't have those freebies, it would probably change how you played the game or how you explored the game. So everything is going to play differently every single time you play the game. You could even play the same four races over and over again, and it's going to play different just because of how these tech cards come out. Not only that, I find that the player count is actually pretty good in the two to four player aspect. While the two player plays differently than the four player, and I will say right now that some races are not that good in a two player game, and they seem like they're much better designed for a three or four player game. Let's look at the Venge as a perfect example. I would never play the Venge in a two player game because their basic power relies on other players deciding if they want to give resources to the Venge. Well, in a two-player game, you have no choice. You have to give the resources to the Venge. So you basically have removed half of the power, or at least half of the decisions with them. So while I can safely say that I probably am sure that not all races are going to play perfectly at all player counts, I can tell you the game itself does play pretty well at two, three, and four players. It plays a little differently, but it definitely plays well at every single one of those player counts. So that's a nice thing to say. So the bottom line here is hyperspace. Do I like it? Well, I liked it enough that I'm back in the game. I'm definitely interested in this game. I love Space Empire. Well, actually, I just love Empire building games. My favorite board game of all time, well, kind of fluctuates between first and second place, is an Empire building game. I think that Space Empire's 4X is a fantastic game. It's probably one of the best Space Empire building games out there on the market. So it shows that I love a really good 4X game. And even having said that and saying that I have lots of Empire building games, I still want to add hyperspace to my collection. I have played this game with people who do not like war games. Matter of fact, the very first time I played this game, I intentionally invited a friend of mine who does not like war games. He is a diehard worker placement and co-op board gamer only. Matter of fact, he played Cthulhu Wars twice, and each time he was grudgingly playing it just because everybody else was playing at the table. 
He loves his worker placement games. If you announce a worker placement game, matter of fact, I'm sure if I say that word a little bit louder, since he actually lives in my neighborhood, he's probably going to bang on my door and ask, Ooh, can we play? So that type of a person, I invited him to come over and play this game. After their first time playing this game, they said, wow, this was a really, really good game. And to me, that says a lot, especially for somebody who is a co-op, worker placement, only type of gamer and hates aggressive games. So that's already a bonus right there. Also, I have another friend of mine who invited a player of this game who is a lot like me. He loves his empire building games. He loves his war games. His biggest joy is to create this big old war machine and just obliterate your opponents. He sat down, played this game, and said, oh, that was a lot of fun. I enjoy this game. I want to play it again. So I've had both ends of the spectrum say how much they enjoy the game. I know I like this game a lot. So I think that Sandy Peterson is probably, this is probably his best design. I thought Cthulhu Wars was a good game. I think The God's War, in my opinion, will probably eventually replace Cthulhu Wars for me. Doesn't mean I'm getting rid of Cthulhu Wars because it still fills that quick niche for me. But I think The God's War will probably, in my personal opinion, in my top 50 games list, my, that's my back of my brain, The God's War is eventually going to replace it. But I think Hyperspace is probably Sandy Peterson's best design he's ever designed. It is a great 4X game. It is designed extremely well. It gives you a feeling like you're playing an empire building game, asymmetric races, asymmetric powers, and he's managed to get that four player game in, in about two and a half hours or less, which is an amazing accomplishment. I will say that I don't think the game is perfect. I think that there's some techs that might be overpowered, especially for some races. I don't think all races are perfect at all player counts, but I think anybody who's going to play the game a couple of times will find those things make those decisions and make those changes and make this a great game for them. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this video series on hyperspace. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the YouTube comments down below. I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as I can. You can also feel free to email me at off the shelf board game reviews. That's OTSBGR at gmail.com. I'll be sure to answer that as quickly as I can. Also, if you enjoy this channel and you enjoy this content, think about subscribing. Your subscriptions do matter. This channel is 100% self-funded by me. I don't generally have the luxury of just getting games sent to me by publishers. So if I ever review a game, it's a game that I purchase out of my own pocketbook. Now, having said that, I do want to add this little minor caveat here that obviously this is a game that I did not pay for in this pre-alpha version. This is a pre-alpha version of the game. I still have to pay for the final version of the game, which I am happily doing. I'm going full in and getting all 25 races because they look really, really awesome. Just want to make sure I comment on that because I know it's important to the viewers. It's important to me as a reviewer, to be perfectly honest, and let you know where I stand on a game. And I want to be honest with all my viewers. Anyways, thanks for watching.